All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Lots to go over today. We'll start off with some Xbox news with Game Pass and some performance gains here from the Xbox Series X over the PlayStation 5, as well as some more news on the PlayStation 5 Pro that was just recently announced. But before we continue, if you do enjoy daily gaming news and content, make sure to hit the subscribe, share the video, and also check out my Spotify link is in the description. So we know that Xbox Game Pass has had a makeover with the different tiers that they are releasing if you do want to subscribe to the service and now it is officially available here for people to go and sign up for it when it comes to the xbox game pass standard tier so here is how it all breaks down if you're still wondering what is going on here with game pass you want an update on this you have xbox game pass core for ten dollars per month with over 25 games console multiplayer deals and discounts now you have xbox game pass standard coming into the console for 15 dollars per month with they say hundreds of games online console multiplayer deals and discounts as well then you have pc game pass at 12 dollars per month with hundreds of games recent day one titles and ea play and deals and discounts and then you have Game Pass Ultimate, which is, in my opinion, still a very good deal at $20 per month is one that I subscribe to. They say here with hundreds of games, recent day one titles and EA Play, and then obviously the multiplayer stuff. If you are on the console, you also get cloud gaming with Game Pass Ultimate. And of course, you get access to Game Pass on PC. So we're in a new era here, and this is going to have people asking questions now when they go to re-sign up for Game Pass, which one they want to get into. You take a look at this. Again, Game Pass Ultimate is by far still the best deal. But if you have a PC, you're getting pretty much everything that you want there, minus the cloud gaming. I think the main thing people really want are the day one games for only $12 per month. So it's, I would say between those two, but if you don't care about day one games, there's still a good catalog here for 15 bucks a month on game pass ultimate or game pass standard. I, I wish that they would have another tier in here just for console. That was even cheaper. Like bring back something here for $10 per month that gives you the hundred games and maybe even reduce the core by a couple of dollars or maybe add in that, ad tier that they've been talking about and a tier of game pass where there are ads in it and then you're paying even less and opening it up that way that may be something in the future i i don't think this will be the last time we see a shift in the xbox game pass tiers but at the end of the day it's going to be a very very great subscription service with the first party titles with the big one starting very very soon in october call of duty black ops 6 and my question when that releases will be how does this move the needle in any way will it be big for game pass will it hurt sales all of those questions my opinion is i think it's going to be positive on both fronts for xbox i think people who play call of duty every year it's like the main game that they do play are still going to go out and purchase the game and then you're also going to see an influx of people subscribing to xbox game pass to get access to people who want to play call of duty but also want to check out what else is out there in the catalog and just want a large bunch of games to be able to play and then call of duty black ops 6 was just that thing to push them to go and check out the service so i know a lot of people are thinking that it being in game pass is going to knock call of duty off as the top selling game i personally don't believe so i could be completely wrong but i just think people are still going to buy the game on all the other platforms and there's going to be an influx of subscribers to xbox game pass so those are the xbox game pass here standard is now here and we're i guess in a new era of xbox game pass now when it comes to the series x right now until the ps5 pro does release is the most powerful console on the market and when this console generation kicked off people were expecting every single game to have an advantage over the playstation 5 it obviously has not worked out that way a lot of that has to do with optimization and where developers decide they build their games first and optimize it and all that type of stuff. And do they have a grasp on the tools? I know the tools discussion still four years into this generation, but we are finally here seeing a big payoff with the Xbox series X. And I say finally, even though there've been many games that have performed better on the series X, there's been also games that perform better on the PlayStation five. So it's been kind of a, a mixed salad here of how these games have done. But with a major game that has released this year that is doing extremely well, actually already over 2 million players, Focus Entertainment put out this announcement. It is doing better on the Xbox Series X. But the interesting thing here is the settings. They are the exact same across the board. But I think it looks like the raw power of the Xbox Series X is pushing Space Marine 2 to get 10 to 15 more frames with the game itself in the performance mode over the PlayStation 5. So that's what they say in the analysis. They noted the performance mode generally outperforms the PS5 by about 10 to 15 FPS. 
and this is a digital foundry talking about this specifically saying as well as having a higher average frame rate the xbox version also benefits from the platform's wider vrr window of 40 to 60 hertz versus 48 to 60 hertz on the playstation 5 combined with the higher average frame rates you get a noticeably smoother outputs on vrr compatible displays and they say as a result digital foundry says it's much easier to recommend the xbox series x version over the playstation 5 when it comes to space marine 2's performance mode although the quality mode is said to be exceptionally stable on both consoles so there you have it space marine 2 a huge game this year that looks phenomenal performing better if you're choosing which one you want to get ps5 version or xbox series x version it looks like the xbox series x is the way to go for it now we have a quick update here for xbox and the friends and followers side of things here as you know you you can follow people on xbox you can add them as a friend they've done a quick update here they say beginning this week starting with the alpha skip ahead users on xbox consoles and the users that have joined the pc gaming preview on windows pcs and handheld devices xbox insiders will be able to preview an updated friends and followers experience so nothing too crazy here but they're saying now you can easily send, accept, or delete friend requests making it simpler to connect with other friends friends are now a two-way invite approach relationship giving you more control and flexibility meanwhile the following someone remains a one-way connection allowing you to stay updated with their shared content whether it's another player club or game i didn't think it was really different than that currently but apparently this is an update that they are bringing out and you can go and you can actually select your social experience and how you want to be able to interact with people, whether you want to accept friend requests, whether you want new friends, new followers, all that stuff. You can see that all in these settings. So if you've been looking for a little update on the Xbox dashboard and UI with the friend side of things, that is here. Okay, let's jump over here and let's talk about the PlayStation 5 Pro. I gave my opinion on it yesterday. I think it's uh, highly priced, overpriced. Honestly, it's teetering on that edge of you just go out and build a pc and as someone who's been a console guy his entire life and all throughout this generation i know a lot of people love to talk to consoles but they just play all their games on pc i still play the majority of my games on my xbox series x and s but going forward into the next generation if the prices are going to be based off of the playstation 5 pro price because now i believe that is going to be the floor of what these consoles are priced at 700 dollars in the u.s and 960 in canada i think it's over a thousand in australia like it's just crazy some of these prices at those prices i start to think just build a pc save a couple extra hundred dollars get a, a better performing box and just build a pc it is better overall especially when you get access to everything in one place playstation games xbox games everything is there at those prices so and when it comes to the PS5 Pro, a lot of people are discussing what is it comparable to in terms of the GPU. We've seen some crazy stuff thrown out there, and we won't really know until there is a deeper analysis into it. But one of the things that they did at the nine minute show was talk about the enhanced games getting 60 frames per second. And they were not clear whatsoever whether this meant these games would all get 60 frames per second. Would they be locked at 60 FPS and, and all of that stuff? Now we have a clarification, and it's what I was thinking it was, and it is that they say Sony wants 60 FPS PS5 Pro enhanced games, but it's happy to settle for less. And this was a report back in April from Tom Warren in The Verge about the enhanced games and what it really meant. As Tom Warren tweets this out, I reported earlier this year that PS5 Pro enhanced games doesn't guarantee 60 FPS. Sony wasn't super clear on this yesterday, but there will be... 30 FPS PS5 Pro enhanced games. And you go down here into the comments and saying a game being pro enhanced can mean anything. They did not make it clear what it will be for any game which was announced. The presentation was poor and so was the blog post. And you can go down here and everyone is kind of confused here. They're, and it, they are asking the question, what does the enhanced mean? If you get that label on a PlayStation 5 Pro game, and it does not mean that it is going to be locked to 60 frames per second. The thing here with the PlayStation 5 Pro is, yes, there is some more raw power into it. But the presentation itself, I don't think at all sold people on really what is that raw power going to do. You'll get an uptick in frames per second with a little bit of boosted visual fidelity. But it's hard to believe that you're really going to notice a lot of these major upgrades, especially if you're playing on a big screen TV. Unless you're seeing games completely get 
a 30 FPS boost going from 30 to 60 frames per second and all in 4K and everything, you'll notice the frame difference, but the actual visual quality, I don't think you're going to notice that on a major big screen TV here where a lot of people have their PlayStation 5s set up. I'm seeing the PS5 Pro and the enhanced games. They're going to have some boosts. They're going to have slightly higher frame rates and they're going to look slightly crisper. But is it worth that price tag here of the $700 that a lot of people are discussing whether it is or not. Now with the PS5 Pro, it does not come with a disc drive and this is seemingly pushing the disc drive itself to be sold out and to, to just boom in sales here across Amazon. It says here that the PS5 disc drive is selling out after the PS5 Pro announcement. And this is on Amazon's best seller list and spotted here by Wario64. That the peripheral has been selling out everywhere. As of the writing, drive is number eight on Amazon's best sellers for video games. And then they say on Best Buy's website, you can't even order the drive anymore as it's currently sold out. And honestly, this isn't surprising. And I don't think this is because people are buying these up, preparing for the PlayStation 5 Pro. I think there's a lot of people out there with a PS5 Slim that are now worried that these things are going to be sold out when the PS5 Pro does come out or that they will eventually have low stock of these and they won't be able to ever access their physical games with their PS5 Slim. So they want to have that option available. And it is kind of a smart move. And Sony is moving away from adding physical drives to their consoles now that they're selling them detached next generation without a physical drive attached onto it. I doubt they're going to be releasing two SKUs here of the PlayStation 6 like they did with the PS5. Will they even support the physical media anymore? That is a question you do have to ask. So picking up one of these just to kind of make sure that you can access all your physical games when they stop making and stop selling consoles with a physical media, probably a smart move. Me, I have the base PS5 with a disk drive, so I do not need to worry about that. And one of the things that I think is actually a good move here with the PlayStation 5 Pro being announced, and I was hoping that this would happen. Now, I'm, I was wishing this would happen with new consoles, but it looks like Sony is now going to be selling refurbished PS5 at a reduced price. So if you do want to get into the PlayStation 5, you're saving about $100 off of the brand new console. They are going to be selling the refurbished PS5s with a disk drive for $400. So that's generally $500 and it probably functions absolutely completely fine. And I would just say, go get the refurbished one if you can, saving that $100. It says, according to Sony's refurbished PS5 is extensively clean, tested and ready for a brand new home with PlayStation quality 100% guaranteed. And you will receive a product that works like new with genuine PlayStation replacement parts as needed that has been thoroughly clean, inspected, and tested and all certified refurbished will come with the necessary accessories, cables, manuals, and are packaged with its own branded certified refurbished packaging. So there you have it. I mean, it's pretty much the exact same thing and you are saving a hundred dollars off of it. So pretty good that they're doing that. And I hope this does eventually lead to a price cut across the current consoles that are out there. The new ones, the Xbox series X S in and the base PlayStation five. So Hopefully we do end up seeing that. All right, jumping over here to Call of Duty Black Ops 6. This was the biggest beta ever. The public test concluded, obviously the second weekend concluded on Monday ahead of the game's release. And we have this update here saying, according to publisher Activision, the beta ranked first for the total number of players, the total number of hours played, and the most matches played. I mean, that is big. It's a huge game. It sells first every single year. It is the top selling game. And now we're seeing the beta being the biggest ever. And I think there's a couple of reasons. One, I mean, it was a beta that was not staggered. Everybody could play at the same time. So you didn't have to go and check, oh, am I on this date or on this date? All those things that was very annoying with the exclusive betas when PlayStation had the marketing rights. And two, it's very fun. I mean, Black Ops 6 was a very, very fun. There's a new Omni move it. There was a lot of hype leading up to it. There was the leaked videos, although Activision did not want that. I think actually helped the hype for the Call of Duty Black Ops 6 and people seeing how the Omni movement was working and then they want to go and try it out. So this is just another thing I think that points to how big Call of Duty Black Ops 6 is going to be and why I think even though it is launching into Xbox Game Pass, it is not going to affect the sales as big as some people think it's going to be. There's some people out there that think this game going into Game Pass is literally going to absolutely destroy all the sales here for Call of Duty, knock it off as a top seller. I personally don't believe that. And I think these beta numbers are going to be pointing to that. People who have played the beta, had fun with it, are going to want to play this game when it does launch 
in October. But I'm gonna end the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.